So our next speaker is Ashley Calder. Um, she's from Vitana, and she's going to be talking about virtual reality with us today. Thank you. Hey. Awesome. Uh, well, yeah, I'll be talking about one of the disruptive technologies that he briefly touched on, which is mixed reality, so augmented reality, virtual reality. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ventana. Um, I got my bachelor's and master's degree in engineering across town, uh, so we won't talk about that, um, <laughs> and founded Ventana to create an end-to-end -end solution for premium mixed reality that also tracked data, uh, so you could really quantify that engagement. We see mixed reality as when like the internet first started. You know, there was no easy way to create a website. You had to hire a dev team and it was super expensive and it had very limited functionality and there was no easy way to track data. Now you have things like Weebly and WordPress. You can, don't even need a single engineer. You can drag and drop, create a website. You've got built-in data collection through there as well as Google. So we're building that for the mixed reality space. We're creating a software platform to easily create these interactive mixed reality experiences with that data collection. Because if you don't know who's engaging, what's the point? So how many people here have tried virtual reality? You got a hand? Okay, awesome. And augmented reality, whether headset or mobile? Okay, great. Um, you know, the, the future of all this is just this seamless access to data that we never had before. You know, imagine walking down a, a city you've never been in and footprints appearing in front of you to magically lead the way. Or better yet, a giant green arrow above your head so your Uber driver actually knows where to find you. <laughs> um, you know, this is the power that augmented and mixed reality gives us. Virtual reality, um, of course, because many of you have tried it, um, you're totally immersed into a new world. So if all of us wanted to feel like we were sitting on the beach right now, VR is the way to go. Um, augmented reality, in their case, just has so much more application because it touches the real world. In general, both AR and VR are going to be an $80 billion industry by 2025, says Goldman Sachs, which is pretty massive. That's, that's less than, than 10 years away. And it's going to change every single industry, from military to engineering to video games to entertainment. So when you're talking about disruptive technologies, this is here, and, and, and as Bill mentioned, it's emerged. It's, it's already starting, which is what's so exciting. Uh, and the utility use cases of AR are what's most exciting, because when, when you can have a utility, it becomes part of your life, and you never knew how you did life before without it, such as your mobile phone. I don't know how I would have gotten here this morning without using my, my Google Maps, because I'm so uh, dedicated to that now. Um, and, and the main use cases we're seeing, Columbia Business School came out with a really great study, is environmental visualization, so being able to see the digital in the real world, which we could never do before, to test out different chairs in your living room, or to see how different drugs interact. Um, education is another, which is so important. So there's been studies done that when you experience virtual or augmented reality, you actually recall it as an actual experience, not as a video you are watching which is amazing because you're so much more likely to remember it. So if you're teaching with augmented and virtual reality, your students are gonna have a much higher success rate. And then there's navigation, of course. So again, like being able to walk down that city and just see the path you should go, see highlighted areas of restaurants. You know, you can imagine Yelp reviews appearing above restaurants as you walk by and knowing, you know, don't go in that one. Um, and then of course you have inspiration, uh, which is fun. I don't know if anyone saw like the Nike ID shoes uh, they just launched, you, you could go in a store and they would projection map in real time on your shoes all the different styles you could have. Um, and there's been some amazing art installations. I'm sure you all heard of Burning Man up, up in Northern California. Uh, it's, it's been really interesting to see the art coming out of there with, mixed with the digital. Um, so the first use cases, obviously, were with mobile devices and, and iPads. Everyone has one in their hand practically 24-7. Um, Ikea was one of the first uh, to, to release their app, letting you see different furniture in your house, um, which drastically increased their sales rate. The fact that you could actually see what this furniture looked like in the actual size gave people the comfortability to order online. So when you talk about companies that are disrupting themselves, they knew 
People don't like going into retail anymore. I personally hate going into Ikea because they make you follow that map and you're stuck. Uh, and, and I just wanted to go in to get one chair, one pillow. You know, So, so they, they heard those responses. They developed this app and their e-commerce sales have skyrocketed, which is a really hard thing to do for a furniture company. Uh, you, these started out as marker-based, so of course QR codes are one of those older technologies that helped launch this product. But now you have companies like Vuforia who've made this super easy to do with actual images. So it could be a picture of Mickey Mouse and you know, a hologram of Mickey jumps out of your phone, which is pretty cool. Uh, and when you talk about different applications, uh, Hyundai is actually using this for their, their car manual. So I don't know how many of you have actually opened up your car manual ever. Yeah, me neither. I'm going to go to YouTube before I, I look at that. So they knew no one was using this. And they created a, an AR application. So you could just hold up your phone. And by recognizing different objects in your car, it could point out different things that you could do, uh, which was pretty amazing. Uh, and then if any of you have kids, I'm sure you played Pokemon Go, or if you're adults and you just like Pokemon. Um, this took over the world a couple summers ago, and uh, at Ventana, we were so excited about this because people finally knew what we were talking about. <laughs> um, we, we had a relation point, whether it was, you know, people, everyone in this room is pretty technical, uh, but when we're talking with marketing teams who, who don't get to see a lot of this tech, the fact that we could say, you know, like Pokemon Go, and they say, oh, okay, you know, I've played that with my kid. Um, but this is pretty amazing that they that it was the first global launch of, of GPS-based AR. Um, so when we talk about you know walking down the street and being able to see the Yelp review, like th this GPS AR is, is a huge step forward in, in what we're going to be able to do. Um, and then you have the major players who released their headsets. So Hololens a few years ago, uh, which is still kind of in developer mode, they still cost three thousand dollars, so they're not you know, into the general public yet, but it's really exciting what people are building on them. Um, and of course, Magic Leap, which finally got released two weeks ago, I think two years after their original plan. Um, it's definitely better than HoloLens, I will say that. I, but, it, but it has fallen short of, of all of the, the hype uh, around it. I don't know if anyone read Palmer Lucky's review from Oculus, his, his review is pretty scathing. I, it's still pretty cool. I would definitely highly recommend checking out Magic Leap. Um, but, but we're still far away from that, that seamless experience. You know, I go to uh, an AR conference in Silicon Valley every year, and uh, last year there was a guy walking around wearing a, an AR headset, and people looked at him like he was crazy. And I was like, okay, if you cannot wear an AR headset at this conference, no one's gonna be wearing them in public. Um, you know, to, to the mall, to the movies, to a football game. You know, I don't see people wearing the, those headsets in public yet. Um, they definitely have use cases with industrial. You know, a uh, lifetime ago I worked at an oil refinery and this would have been insanely helpful. Uh, we sat there and had to memorize the entire refinery where a thousand people worked. If I could wear a headset and visualize what valve was where, it, it would be insanely productive and reduce training time. So you have companies like Daiquiri, based here in LA, that are building these and use cases to, to improve industrial uh, systems. Um, but at Ventana, we, we really wanted to create something that was non-wearable. We wanted to create an experience that anybody could engage with and interact with in real time. So we developed um, holographic projection hardware uh, and then software to make it interactive using IR sensors and, and voice control. Um, so being based in LA, a lot of our first use cases were entertainment. That's kind of what, what got us there. We started in music. We were doing hologram concerts for Steve Aoki, Nicky Romero, uh, a bunch of DJs. Um, everyone who's actually paying us, though, was a brand. So we said, why do you guys like this? Why do you want to use it? Um, and it was all about engaging consumers. You know, no one is watching commercials anymore. Everyone streams their TV. They stream their music, as our previous speaker was talking about. The only way to connect with these younger consumers is by these branded experiences. So our, head, our beachhead market was really in, in marketing. And, and it's really amazing what you can do as a brand with an experience, and especially with augmented and virtual reality, to connect with people on an emotional level. Um, so I'm going to play a quick video and show you just what some of our, our stuff looks like. First time ever, your uniforms for next Saturday. Let's get it. 
So, introducing the Lone Star Rangers. They all have Snapchat open because it didn't happen unless you shared it. Um, we actually got this video from Twitter from one of the kids. They posted this, which is pretty fun. Um, but yeah, we, we launched the, the new Nike uniform. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was it, it was a really fun event. But that's pretty amazing, like this emotional experience. You, you know, you wouldn't have gotten that from, from a video, right? If you were just playing a video, watching a commercial, you're not going to get that type of emotional response. And that is what makes this technology so powerful. On top of that, there have been studies done also by Columbia Business School. You know, on average, you're going to spend 75 seconds at least interacting with this AR content which is two and a half times longer than any radio or TV ad. So when you talk about spending money on something to engage a consumer, this is what's going to get them to engage and voluntarily engage and, and stick with it. And then while they're there, we're going to track all types of data on them because data is everything. Um, you know, you can spend this money at this amazing event, have that great experience. If you can't quantify that, how do you explain to your boss that it was a good event? Um, how do you follow up with those consumers who are there? Um, so what we've done is we've built in cameras and IR sensors to every displays that we do, so we're getting an image of every single person that engages with hologram. We're taking that image, it's, it's stored on our, our cloud portal, uh, and we're using facial recognition to determine your age, gender, and sentiment. Um, age and gender help us understand demographic information, sentiment, um, happy, unhappy, neutral. You know, hopefully you're just happy with Nike. Uh, but when we do things uh, for Lexus, we know you're happier looking at a blue RX than a red LC car. Um, and all that data we store and we can sync with our client CRM system. So um, speaking of Lexus, I think one of the other speakers is, is from the Clippers. Uh, this is actually at all of the Clippers games for Lexus. Um, so we started out uh, about three years ago now uh, doing an installation. Um, it was only two weeks and they said, we really want to engage our consumers and we need to track data. So we, we created this fun hologram basketball game. Uh, this guy gets to see his hologram live, and with his gestures through the IR tracking, he's bouncing a basketball, we're counting points. Um, one of our, our global patents is around the ability to film a person in any environment and project their hologram live. Um, we joke, we've invented all this tech, and we're doing selfies, uh, but that's what people really want <laughs> to get them engaged. Um, and in those two weeks, we increased uh, Lexus's qualified leads by 1,800% from their past experiences. So we went from two weeks in one location to now three years, and we've done 12 stadiums. Uh, and now we have hologram car configurators, as I mentioned. So with the swipe of your hand, you can pick the color, the rims, the interior. You can see yourself in, in the car. So then I know exactly what car you want. And these are the types of experiences that, that we're helping companies create. Uh, and then we are also helping a lot with retail. Um, retail has really been struggling because of Amazon and these other disruptors. Uh, and I love this quote, and I forget who said it, but, but it was in Forbes. Retail isn't dead. Boring retail is dead. <laughs> you know, I can just go buy that sweatshirt online. What is going to bring me into that mall and into that store? Uh, so with Adidas, we launched the first ever hologram workout. Uh, so to launch Adidas by Stella McCartney, we had a hologram of Stella McCartney pop up in eight of their flagship stores. And then there was uh, Jaws Nelson, she's a famous boxer. She taught a class via hologram every hour. So consumers got to sign up through the Facebook app or, or the actual Adidas app. They'd come in, they'd take the hologram class. We'd track that they were there. We knew they were there. We'd send them an email right after uh, with a link to then purchase the Stella McCartney by Adidas. And we track all of that. So, so it's an entire 360 view of that whole entire consumer experience. Um, here's another quick video uh, just to show you what that was like.
So it was super fun. We actually had over 5,000 consumers go through and, and do this experience. When you talk about, you know, trying to get foot traffic into retail and, and provide, uh, you know, an amazing experience for people, it, it, was, it was really successful. And so we've grown that for Adidas into multiple of their other brands. Um, which is exciting is the content can really be anything. Um, we're also doing telepresence with our technology for uh, clients like Intel and Microsoft. We're going to have to work with IBM next. <laughs> uh, but if you can't be there, we can beam you there live instead. So we did this for an Intel executive in Taiwan to get announced their new processor chip at Computex, uh, a huge conference. Um, so when you talk about you know making a statement being way more exciting than PowerPoint, I know I'll have to, to bring it next time. Uh, it's 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 pretty exciting. Um, we've also used it to uh, display new things that have not been built yet. So working with architecture firms. Uh, and showing new manufacturing plants and how they work and where everyone's going to be uh, located. Uh, similarly, a casino used it. They're building a new hotel and they wanted to pre-rent and pre-sell these hotel rooms. Uh, and so this is just another quick video um, of what the, the general control looks like. Um, and they were real, literally building this hotel. So this was at their, their groundbreaking ceremony and people got to interact and see you know, what everything looks like. It was pretty fun. Um, and then we're working with, with jewelry companies. So uh, again, with the content being anything, uh, it, it really can. And what's super exciting about this company is they're the first company using our platform to create their own content. Um, so I said in the beginning how we really see this, this mixed reality space being the beginning of the internet. We want to make this easy to create these experiences. Right now, you have to have a huge team of Unity developers and software developers. Uh, we want anyone to be able to do this. So this jewelry company with our software, they can upload any 3D files they've created of rings, you know, necklaces, et cetera, our software automatically translates that into the 3D game engine, adds built-in gesture control to, and, and data collection. You can pick what interaction you want. And, and this is what's so exciting. So without any engineers, you know, they can upload it. And it already has that, that gesture control and it's tracking all of my data because, again, that's what's, what is so powerful. Um, we rolled out this to, to 18 different stores for Shaw. Um, they work closely with Berkshire Hathaway. They own a number of jewelry companies. So now we're rolling out to 50 of their stores next, which is very, very exciting. Um, and, and again, the content can be anything. So, so this is what we, we are so excited about. Um, and because it's all, built, it's all built on this cloud infrastructure, anyone can access it anywhere. We do, we do work globally, including mainland China. We're good through the firewall, so that was a big deal last year. Um, and, and we can easily plug in new technologies like artificial intelligence. We are not an AI company, but we know this is changing the world, and we want to be able to get smarter with our data. So we're integrating AI not only to learn from our data and give our clients some better insights, but also leverage some of the chatbots you've already built. Um, how many people have talked to a, a chatbot? Awesome, yeah, most of you have. And, and most people who don't think they have really have because it's that little dialogue box um, that pops up on that website. I've got an example. You think you're talking to a person, but it's not. Um, but, but AI is amazing because it, it, it does enable this rapid analysis of preferences that a human just could not look at in, in real time in that way. Um, so I mentioned you know, that dialogue box. Just a video of an example. Um, everyone here is very technical, so it's great. I can skip through some of these things. Um, but so many companies are starting to implement these on their website because obviously it's saving costs, reducing headcount. Um, but what if you didn't want to text them? What if you wanted to just talk to someone and get that same response? So what we did through our platform is we have an API. We can connect any chatbot. Um, skip these examples. Um, we can connect any chatbot to a hologram and make it the brain of the hologram. So that same chatbot that you're texting questions to, you could actually just have a hologram. You could talk and ask questions. Um, so whether it's in store saying, hi, I need this sweater in a size small, that hologram can be integrated with the entire inventory system and know, well, I'm sorry, we don't have that here, but let me order that from your e-commerce site. Um, or I know we have some people from Lionsgate. You know, we work with a lot of the studios having you know, Mickey Mouse himself greet you as you come into Disneyland and tell you where the bathroom is and, and where to go. Um, so here's a, a quick video to show you what that can look like. Hours, products, parking, and more. 
Julie, I'm hungry. If you're looking for a sit-down meal, head to the Italian restaurant on two for their signature pasta dish. Julie, what's Ventana? Great question. Give me one second. I'm not an actor, but I'm doing a voice here. This hologram is brought to you by so. Ventana, <laughs> the leader in interactive hologram technology. Julie, where can I park my car? The closest parking lot is located two blocks from here. And she'll keep going if I let her. Um, but but yeah, so we have um, I, you know holograms like this on cruise lines. Tells people what for dinner, book excursions with. Uh, we're testing this out at a bank, uh, so you can imagine a hologram bank teller. Um, because we have facial recognition built in, we know who you are, and we give you access to your bank account. Um, and because we also know who you are in your general age range, that hologram can make certain suggestions to you that the ATM could not. So. You know, I'm in my 30s and maybe I need to refinance my mortgage or, or something like that, added value product. So this bank sees uh, that the branch is actually turning into like that self-checkout line at the grocery store uh, where you just have that one bank manager and you have different holograms and AI talking to you, which is really interesting. And uh, what's great is we're already used to talking to them. You know, with Siri, Siri and Alexa, we're, we're used to asking these AIs questions all the time and it's actually much easier. And Comscore estimates that by 2020, which is really, really close, 50% um, of all searches will be done with voice commands, which is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, five years ago, Siri was terrible. Um, but then everyone kept using her, and she kept getting better, and she can finally understand what I'm asking, uh, which is exciting. Um, so, so all of these factors are drastically changing the way that we are going to interact with each other and interact with companies. And companies are going to have to change the way that they try and reach out to their clients, whether it is consumer-based or B2B. Um, I was mentioning to Bill, you know, we also are starting to work in the pharmaceutical space. Um, it was a space I never thought we would. They reached out to us through our website. Um, and they're just trying to find new ways to explain how their drugs work in a more visualized way and understand what that doctor is understanding about the drug and being able to have a live interaction versus just playing them a video, telling them what it does and, and hoping they remember um, and, and not you know whining and dining them because it's very restricted by the government of how much money you can spend on, on, on doctors because you don't want people to be bribing them but you need to be able to communicate what your drug does which, which becomes very interesting. Um, but all of this uh, with the mixed reality and the data collection is, is really where the connection with AI, this is the trifecta of where we see this drastically changing every industry. You can use mixed reality to engage people like never before. And then while they're engaged, track all types of data on them that you could never get otherwise, and then use artificial intelligence to process that data and learn from it. Um, a good example, uh, Zara just did a really great campaign. They're, they're a retailer. They had empty storefront windows all over the world, completely empty. And you actually had to download their app and hold up the phone to have an AR content, and then there would be an AR live model in, in that storefront window, which is really creative. But layer AI on top of that, imagine if it knew who I was and it would show me someone you know, who's shorter, who's more my stature, wearing the styles I like versus my friend who's six foot and going to show someone taller and, and bigger. And, and you can imagine the amount of increased sales from that to show me exactly something that, that would fit me. Um, so when you combine these three, that is when we think it gets so exciting. Um, so yeah, I'd love to answer any questions. I just kind of talked a lot. Yeah. With data and being able to interact and manipulate data and perform computation of that data on the fly, um, and maybe even be able to interact, because you had one slide where um, a user was interacting with an architectural diagram. So mm -hmm. something like that, and maybe even if possible, be in the data, which I think might be a little more challenging. If you could speak to that, I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, so I think it depends on, on what that data is. I don't know uh, if you work with Tableau. Um, Tableau is a, a software that runs on top of Excel um, that just kind of takes Excel and makes you, helps you visualize it that next level, but it all still is 2D. 
um, we're talking with them to see, okay, well, how can, how can we move this into the mixed reality space and, and, and make this more visual? Um, I think the real-time data stuff we're doing is, is for targeting and to say, okay, um, we know their age, their gender, we know they're happy looking at this, let's show them more in this, this direction. Um, so it's targeted that way. But I think more from like the business use case of I need to really understand Going back to my refinery example of like how you know how if I change this this temperature here and and doing the oil how is that going to affect downstream and what's that doing um, I think that becomes really interesting and I, I think you know people are working on that especially with those industrial use cases with with daiquiri um, that's what that's what they really focus on mm -hmm. so a lot of what you've just shown is based upon um, specialized hardware whether it's the uh, you know the virtual reality or the augmented reality, but how do you see it getting to the point where it's in the home where they don't need special equipment but you can still use what you have today? Um, you know, in my company that would be a great innovation, but I don't see it happening anywhere. Yeah, so um, I guess you right now you need this like third eye in which to view the world through, right? So whether it's your phone or your iPad or putting on a headset. Or in our case, we've got standalone hardware, um, but it's still bulky hardware. Um, you know, a lot of people are working on light field technology. That's like that true Princess Leia hologram, that, that 360, like light hitting light. Um, we're still pretty far away from that. I mean, people can use light field technology to make something about this big, um, very limited in color spectrum. Um, it's really exciting. It's still really expensive, really hard to do, um, but, but we're watching that. I mean, I think. I think breakthroughs there, which is going to definitely be a combination with the quantum computing aspect, because if you, light fields is an insane amount of data. Um, Microsoft's uh, MetaStage just opened in LA a couple weeks ago. Intel is opening up their their light field capture capture studio, um, so it's doing volumetric capture of people. Um, but there's still not a good way to display that yet. Like we, you know, we can display it on our hardware. Um, you can take it and display it on Hololens. Um, but like you're basically doing the full volumetric capture, it's insane amount of data, and then we're dumbing it down to use on the hardware that's possible today. Um, so you know, as quantum computing becomes available, as battery power for some of these headsets get better, you know, it's kind of that convergence of all these technologies. Mm. Uh, with the with the you know myriad of, of potential use cases for mixed reality, um, how do you as as a business immersed in that? How do you decide which which jobs you're going to accept in which industries? Yeah, and, and what's what uh, do you have preferences based upon you know some things? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, as a startup, you have limited resources, so you can only you know you you've got to make make it work with what you've got in, in a short amount of time to grow to the next step. So for us, you know, the fact that brands, brands have big budgets for this, you know, the, the brand experiential spend is $560 billion a year. Um, it's a huge market. We knew there were budgets for it. So we said, okay, let's, let's start there. This is our beachhead market. We're going to use brands to build out the tech and, and get revenue and get people on our software platform. And then we can go into these other verticals. Um, you know, we get crazy phone calls, like billionaire birthday party. My son's bat mitzvah, like so many bat mitzvahs calls. Like, but we have to just say no. Like, it could be a quick fifty grand, like some of these, but like it it doesn't help us. Our our focus is our software, and how do we continue making this a useful tool and getting more companies building on the system? Because we want you know we want people building on it because. You know, I don't necessarily know the best use case for, for pharma. You know, they reached out to us, which we were so excited. Multiple companies were like, okay, there's something here. I don't know that industry, but let's work with them and spend the time with them to figure this out uh, versus, you know, wasting resources on these parties when I don't think that's a big enough industry. Yeah, quick question. You had, um, with the avatar previously, you talked about the API integration. It, um, are you actually doing the translation from the text to the speech 
or so wh how is that being? What, I mean, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to understand is what is available from your API if we were to integrate it into, say, another, another knowledge base? Yeah, yeah. So um, this kind of helps explain it. So uh, we work with IBM Watson, Amazon Alexa, anyone. They're doing the text to speech uh, or, or speech to text that takes that text, gets the answer, sends back that text, does text back to speech. We're doing the automatic animation of that character. Um, so we have, you know, based on whatever that answer is, we're automatically animating that face to move and, and talk back to you. Um, because we're getting your image and understanding your emotion, we're feeding that back in to, to affect the character emotion on the face as well. So that, that's our piece. We don't want to compete with IBM. They're, they're good. <laughs> with Watson, they're, they're, they're one of the best. Um, and so we're, we're kind of that other piece uh, of the visual, like, 3D component. Mm -hmm. So your software is um, interpreting the facial expression, and is that part of your platform, or are you using Watson for that? Um, we're actually not using Watson. So uh, again, what we've done is we've built middleware. So our software is taking your image, um, automatically animating the face, and we're, we're taking that image, sending it to the cloud, and we can use we could use IBM Watson, we could use Google. Um, the bank has invested in millions of dollars in crazy biometric authentication, so we know it's actually you to, to get access to your bank account. Um, so we're kind of that middleware enabling the pieces and connecting with, with the APIs for that. Um, and so our, our software is really on uh, the gesture control, the live holographic capture, and that uh, 3D holographic animation, like that's automatically happening. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I always talk way quicker, so, um, was, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. How did your engineering background with ESC approach led to, I'm joking, <laughs> help you get, how did your background in engineering, working for Noto Grumman and the like, get you into that? Yeah, it's a great question. So, give me an <laughs> um, so I didn't know mixed reality and augmented reality was an option. You know, when I was in school, I, I didn't know. You know, I, I loved engineering, I loved building things, um, but I also loved art, and I didn't ever know how to put the two together. Um, you know, so I always went for the job that paid the best. So Northrop Grumman, um, and then I worked at British Petroleum for three years, running production at the oil refinery. Where did refinery. you work at Northrop Grumman here in Space Park or where? Yeah, El Segundo. How on the F-35. I consult with them. I didn't hear about you. Oh, really? <laughs> it's a big company. <laughs> it's a great company. Ron Sugar was still involved at the time or no? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I, I mean, I was... He was a student at UCLA, not USC. Oh, okay. He was chairman okay. of the board. You know. Yeah. <laughs> if, you had, if you had to do it over, would you take another major or was this really something helpful that didn't make any difference? It was definitely helpful. I think engineering teaches you how to think. Okay, thank you. I think it teaches you how to solve problems and look at things objectively uh, and, and find a solution. Well, at USC, um, they taught you how to solve problems? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. no, no, seriously, because at UCLA, I was teaching them how to avoid them in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we get into them. But, uh, <laughs> no game, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, but yeah, but just to finish the story, because uh, you wanted to know, so on the weekends, I was programming light shows for DJs because I loved that, and that was fun. And I really got into programming LED walls and what you could do with the visuals, and we wanted to take this to the next level, and that's when I got into learning what virtual reality was and augmented reality and experimenting and building on the weekends and became a company. So, so school didn't become really like an anchor. It became a springboard to move to other things as you became excited. That's awesome, really. I, I, very impressive. Thank you, yeah. I mean, I think... I don't know what 20-year-old really knows what they want to do for the rest of their life, but good job if you do. I did not. <laughs> Very nice. That's fun. Oh, that's not my laptop. Great. Okay, thank you. Great.